Hello and welcome to a Bird Camp Wonderland special. Um, why is it special? I hear you all ask. Uh, I'm the Mighty Pirate, of course. Uh, that's why it's special. You know why it's special. Um, I'm, I'm joined tonight by uh, our, our Lord and Saviour himself, Mr. Mr. Danny the GFP, who is not really Danny the GFP, but we still call him that. Uh, hello, Beardy Monkey. Hello. How are you? Uh, I'm. I'm all. I'm all good. I'm all good. Um, we do this once a year, don't we? Me and you just sit here and talk about football of a local kind once upon a time and uh, fill in our lovely listeners about what I do. And basically, it's just an ego trip for me, isn't it? No, it's not really. But yeah, we Danny and I like to get together once a year and and just talk a bit about um, the the beautiful game. At a lower level than the Arsenal, I think it's fair to say, Danny, based upon our uh, our past. Yeah, and um, at times the, the levels aren't actually that far apart, especially no. the, the, towards the end of last season. They were quite similar. Quite similar, on the similar run. Um, so what are we talking about then, dear listener? Uh, those of you that, that have followed ABW for a long time will, will probably know uh, myself and certainly will know Danny. And, and you may know that I run a what you class in England as a Sunday league football team um, by the name of Barbican Pirates. We we formed back in all the way back in 2013. Um, so a uh, long, long time ago, Danny was just a wee nipper and I was simply a twinkle in dad's eye. Not really, but you know, um, and we established the club. And of course, if you're listening to this, you're probably an Arsenal fan, but you may not be. You might have just cross contaminated over to us and welcome if you did. But we all love Arsenal. We love the the wonders of the uh, of the Emirates and the glitz of the Premier League and the big name signings and and all that goes with it. But behind that, there is of course the lesser lesser levels, the lower levels, the the bread and butter, the grassroots, if you like, um, which is where myself and my team come in. And uh, a couple of years, um, well, actually a couple of years, it really was, it was from year one that, that Danny and I uh, had a dream. We had a dream of uh, of essentially crossing the podcast with the pirates and we thought what would be really cool is if us our, our i think it's our second season um that we combine the two and um and we had a partnership essentially so thus was born a bird cat wonderland's uh sort of link up with the pirates and um, we carried the logo on the shirts didn't we danny for uh for the first two seasons on the old red and black and red and uh, green and black shirts um and then we we carried on ever since and uh, i think it's fair to say danny we've we've grown haven't we over the years we've we've taken it up different levels and expanded it a bit yeah and your shirts are seen all over the world and if people really want that you've still got some of the original first second and third season of shirts available i do i do yeah. yes we'll um we'll probably talk a bit about that actually uh Almost in a, a short collector's while. item Yes, um, we we will talk a little bit about our uh, our merchandise <laughs> towards the end of the pod. But um, but yeah, if if you're listening to this, dear listener, um, thank you for listening to it. But really, we just wanted to to just come at a bit of a perspective about about why we why I do what I do, why Danny supports um, what I do, and and the reason why we do fundraising every year, um, which is we should stress right off the bat is entirely optional um you good people who watch our youtube shows live our abw live shows or you might donate to the podcast off your own free will we appreciate each and every one of you you know whether it's a small amount large amount whatever you do it, it means a lot to us um, and the same can be said of of i think most grassroots sunday or saturday football league teams um we all do this for the love of the game um i certainly don't get paid for what i do i can confirm that um and we don't pay our players. We're not of, of that level. We are literally a, a band of, of players who turn up on a Sunday morning. We put our own nets up. Um, we change in the same rundown uh, changing rooms every week. We play on the same terrible pitches every week. And, uh, and we try and enjoy the game for what it is. And all of that costs money. And unfortunately, that means that we we rely on the generosity of sponsors, of partners um, and of friends essentially that that's what people who help help support us are they're friends of the club they're friends of the game um and friends of the podcast so uh so really um what we decided this year was um we thought we'd reach out to an, another third party uh danny so why don't you tell the listeners a little bit about uh, a certain gentleman and, and his shop and how we came to to join forces with the podcast and then how that's now potentially expanding to the pirates 
Yeah, Gav was uh, set up this podcast with uh, with a few with uh, five others of us in two thousand, summer of two thousand and thirteen. And uh, Gav's now got his shop. It's uh, if you go to at She War on Twitter, you'll see a link there. To he has got two shops. He has got the She Wore Yellow Ribbon She Wore Shop. I'm just reading it from his website. And the other one he has got is the Arsenal shirts. Make sure you put an S on the end of that because the other one is a book. And the Arsenal shirts, he he buys and sells Arsenal shirts. And so they're all um, all guaranteed to be top quality ones. Even does some wonderful framed ones. I think it was Gav who, uh, when we did the show for the, it was Gav, the one millionth, uh, once we hit a million views on YouTube, Gav gave away a signed framed Santi Cathola shirt. Now, I thought it'd just be a, a signed um, framed shirt, but it wasn't. It had a few photos, a couple of photos in there, and it is all done with black frame, a black background. And he posted it to uh, the winner who lived in, I think he lived in Oxfordshire. Oh, God, I can't remember his name. Oh, we were uh, talking to him on, on Facebook. So Gav did that, and he sells those in the shop for best part of 200 quid, and he gave one away. And so, uh, yeah, if you do have any shirts you want to get rid of or you want to go and buy a, a quality second-hand Arsenal shirt, some of them are light new, some of them have got a little bit of um, wear and tear to them, but he will um, write in the description um, the quality of the shirt. So he has loads of them. If you go to his website, which is uh, thearsenalshirts.com, and I'm just looking here. Uh, oh, here you go. Like this one. It's a 2008-2009 away. That is the, the Archivin four goals against Liverpool one, I think. And it's large. It's £25. And he says in underneath it, half a dozen one centimetre long pulls on the front, most near the bottom, one to the left of the bad. Now, that's the kind of quality information you get when you buy off a of Gav. You might not necessarily get that off of eBay. Plus, you know you're going to be buying off of an Arsenal fan. And then all the money he makes, he goes out and buys more shirts. And so loads of them are really reasonably priced, 30 quid. But remember, he's got to post these two. I think if he posts abroad, it might be a little bit more. He's got them going all. I mean, he's got one here. It's the uh, the 1988 to 91 away shirt. That's, that's only £40. And, well, this is an ugly one. It is the 2011-12 away. It's like diagonal stripe of black and aqua blue. I think I must have blocked that out of my memory. Anyway, so the other shop he has got is um, the, the shewarshop.com. And now Gav is going to, should we say here what Gav's going to do for us? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Gav is now going to be, he's a sponsor on one part of Chris's shirt. If you go and have a look at um, the, is it Barbican Pirates Twitter yes. page? Yes, shorts, shorts. Well, shorts and and uh, uh, sideline gear, but yes, he is. Lovely. Yeah. I knew it was something to do with the kit. Yeah. Um, I think I vaguely remember, maybe I just sort of, was it this the transfers that you stick on that you've shared with us already, not shared the actual kit? Um, I did tweet a picture, but I will send you a picture of the shorts because I have ah, done some. See, yes, that's my, that's I did I show you the sure. transfer, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, vaguely remember you seeing that uh, before you, you pressed them all on. Anyway, so Gav has said that he will give uh, away a uh, – I'm sure this is what he said. I've asked him – I've sent him a message saying which ones was it, and he's not replied yet, the cheeky monkey. <laughs> um, no, he's still not replied. Well done, Gav. And one of them is the watches, the uh, the, the clock end clock watch. And they're on his site for at the moment for the best part of £100, and they're sold out. So hopefully we'll be getting some of those back in time. Uh, back in – Back in time. That's not the right words, is it? Back soon. Hopefully we can come back. <laughs> back in to... time. That's like back to the future. <laughs> He's giving one of those. He's giving one of those to Chris to give away. And the other one, this one that I've actually got myself, is the 12-inch clock, wall clock. Yeah, it's acrylic one. He sells those for nearly 60 quid. If you follow Gav on Twitter... Um, the she war account then you will see that he's regularly tweeting about these and people taking pictures of them on their walls and people going to games and holding their wrist up to the to, and taking a photo of it wearing the watch they're absolutely brilliant such a genius idea so he's given both of those away and so there's, there's two things that this that we're doing this podcast so if you want to give money to the, the barbican pirates because chris is going to tell you in a little bit about how much money it costs and it's not just you turn up you play on a field and you're done no it costs an absolute fortune every year and so we're thinking you can even just donate the money to um you can go to um the Burkamp Wonderland, which is uh, at burkampwonderland.co.uk go on donation and then you can do it all via paypal and you can do it so that we don't get charged any money but if you do do that and you are going to donate some money either to the podcast or to the barbican pirates put in the notes who's it for whether it's for chris whether it's for the podcast but if you donate five quid to the pirates only the pirates five pound or more then you'll get entered into a draw to win one of these two prizes we're going to make sure that we're not going to do what happened a couple of years ago and that's that that scumbag dk won both shirts we were doing <laughs> a random number generator live on a live show and it came up with his number twice in a row we're editing it this time once you've won one of the prizes you're not being entered for the other prize because that was an absolute <laughs> nightmare just shows that it wasn't rigged because 
DK's a bit of a scumbag, really. <laughs> if you follow him on Twitter, <laughs> he's, uh, he likes to annoy people. I think it's brilliant. Anyway, so there's two things we're going to give away. So if you donate five pound or more, you get entered one entry per person soon. If you enter, if you give him twenty, if you give Chris five thousand pounds, you're not getting a thousand entries. You're only going to get one because otherwise it'd be fair. <laughs> if you can give him five grand, then I think Chris will go out of his own pocket and buy you both of these oh, things. Oh, play and, up, and play you up front <laughs> for five grand, <laughs> and hand deliver them and take you out for dinner if you want to give him <laughs> five grand. Twice. Yeah. So just just to go over that again, you, um, the two things are the twelve inch wall clock that is on Gav's site and the 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 the, the watch. And one person is going to win one, and another, a different person will win the other one. Uh, I think it's going to be free postage if it's inside the UK. If it's outside the UK, we'll have to speak to Gav about what's going to happen with that. So, um, yeah, Chris, tell people about how much the extortionate amount of money that it costs every time you tell me. And it's probably gone up again, hasn't it? Uh, yes, it has. Um, I, I'm also going to, breaking news, I'm going to throw in an extra sweetener for this oh. because, um, well, that's two prizes from Gav. Well, two's not a fun number, is it? Should we make it three? Let's make it three. You're not giving so, me away, are you? The, no god no so uh so the first two or the the top two um people that are drawn out will win those two items from gav shop um third place will win a pirate shirt of their choice so fully personalized uh you can have abw on the front instead of our our other sponsors if you wish or you can have a match version which is exactly what the players were um and you can have either the the home uh, red shirt you can have the training shirt which is black with a nice red print which is quite funky or you can have the navy blue with gold print which is very very much like arsenal's new adidas third kit that's due to be released soon so um your choice and it's fully personalized with your name and number if you wish or you can have it plain whatever you like so uh, there you go i'll throw that into third so third not third place third draw third entrant a third possible drawn. winner that's what i'm looking for Lovely. so they can have that as well um but yeah money wise um Yes, it's difficult. Now, we have to say right off the bat, um, we do have sponsors. You know, this is not a, a pity party. You know, we are uh, a self-sustaining model in that we we do as best we can to renew sponsorships. We're, we're very proud and, and very pleased to have on board um, Chris, uh, who who I, I speak to, and Danny, you have, who runs a company called Elements Brand Management. He's the um, one who did all the lo- all of the podcast new logos, and he's done all the stuff for the the shirts that we will be flogging eventually as well. He's brilliant. He is, he is yeah, and he and he's a lovely bloke. He's done a lot of work for me, website wise. He's currently building me a, a personal business website for something else, which is fantastic. He's a lovely guy. He's an Arsenal fan. Um, he got in touch uh, last season, um, start last season, said, you know, how would you fancy me sponsoring the team um so he was on the back of the shirt last year this year he's upgraded he's on the front of the shirt this year um so elements are our main principal sponsor um we've also been very lucky in that our captain of our team's father runs a hotel in tiverton um so they've they've taken the back of the shirt which is great um and we do also have a a partnership with a local uh, martial arts teacher um, who has provided sponsorship with the um, sort of the sleeve sponsor, so kind of a smaller sponsor. But um, he's also got us a nice deal with Herbalife, who uh, is a company that some people might be familiar with. Cristiano Ronaldo and Zlatan Ibrahimovic are uh, well-known ambassadors for their products. Um, but I should stress they aren't giving us any money. So before anyone thinks we're minted, uh, no, we just get some of their products to, to use. Um, which is quite handy for overweight, uh, lazy footballers like me. Um, so, yeah, we we do have a little bit of, of sort of source income. And of course, we take subs for matches. Um, but just to give listeners a little bit of a breakdown this season, before we even kick a football, uh, we have a, a brand new squad. We've, we've gone into a bit of a rebuild this summer, a, a new era, if you like. We've got a squad of 22 players. We've played two preseason games so far, uh, just to keep it, normal we've lost both standard uh both by one goal each though so not too bad but we're starting out our pre-season with 22 players and before we even kick a ball in the league um we've already had to pay out 876 pounds that is um, crazy and the fa don't don't help you they don't go oh we're all this money we've got from uh, the Wembley games and, and all the money yeah. we find players for yeah we're going to give it to grassroots football like they're always going on about helping grassroots football yeah, that is that is a bit of a myth unless you're in one of the very big cities. And even then, it's often a myth. Um, what does that 870 odd quid get you? I hear you all ask. Well, um, in the eye of a shitty stick. Not a lot. Yes. <laughs> um, as a, a, an affiliated FA club, we have to, by law, purchase um, uh, club insurance, which is obviously if players break limbs, etc. That is a mandatory requirement, as is um 
uh, as is the club li public liability insurance, because a lot of people won't realise this, but if you're playing in a public park and you kick the ball into the road and a child runs out in front of a car to get the ball for you and he gets knocked over by the car, the club can be sued for literally millions of pounds. That is, if you don't have insurance, uh, clubs have been put out of business because they haven't had insurance or public liability insurance. Um, and literally clubs have had to pay out hundreds of thousands. And it, I believe in one case, it was actually into the millions of pounds, um, which naturally was settled out of court, of course, but you, you get the gist. If you don't do have these insurance- have to buy their own or do you have to help them? No, the club the club pay an, a one off fee which can, which covers the club and its players. So every player that's registered for the club has that public liability insurance as long as they are a registered footballer. Um, so that you're talking basically three hundred and fifty odd quid for those two insurances over the course of a season. Uh, we pay league fees of one hundred and ten pounds a season, which is literally nothing other than entering the league, nothing else. We pay two lots of £248 a season to rent a pitch. Uh, what do we get for that pitch? We get a pitch which is, on average, um, mown and lined probably three times a year at most during the winter, rarely if at all. We get cold showers in a what is literally a concrete shed uh, in terms of um, uh, changing rooms. Uh, there's no facilities to store uh, belongings like, you know, no, we don't have like lockers or uh, secure areas. It is literally a concrete sort of um well a concrete building next to a pitch. Um, it's very cramped, very tight conditions. Um, footballers at this level we're used to it that's what we get you know we we get with what we have but there's no there's no heating there's no uh, other than the fan in the corner and there's certainly no hot showers um and there's often a block toilet on a sunday morning so it is very much your your lowest of low levels um Tell me about last was it last season or the one before that where you were flooded and it was like two months without a game yeah yeah so basically last year plymouth and west devon division that that our club are based in um in in devon in the uk we we pioneered the trial of a winter break uh with the idea being that the pitches would recover and that uh, teams would be playing on 3g surface um if you're anything like me i don't believe in 3g or 4g the, the beautiful games should be played on grass mud up to your ankles the good old days unfortunately health and safety stops a lot of that these days but i'm not a big fan of 3g 4g it wrecks people's knees it's it's not a you know it's not a normal uh you know normal game the ball doesn't bounce the way it does on grass so the uh, the fa decided they wanted to try and save their pitches which of course means that they save money because they don't have to line them and use them etc um so they forced us into a, a two and a half month winter break whereby we didn't play a game as a result of that we lost five players due to various reasons but mostly because they weren't getting their football scurvy it's scurvy all, yeah all pinch for one of them even moved to Iceland, um, not because of us, I should stress. Um, and and players lose interest, unfortunately. And for people like myself, if people don't know I'm I'm 36 now. I'm not, you know, I'm not a young lad. Unfortunately, um, you know, I have a uh, my own family life, my own personal life. I, I work a full time job. I also run a business part time where I can. Um, and uh, you know, and I I do these sort of things. You know, I, I have a busy life. It's it, it's a commitment to get a group of lads together each week and to keep them motivated and enjoying the sport. And unfortunately, when you're playing with pitches that are, are poor or you're playing, you know, within a, a very restricted budget where you can't potentially offer the best equipment or the best facilities for players, they lose interest, unfortunately. And um, uh, some clubs are very lucky in that they have sponsors who are willing to invest you know, very large sponsorships. Uh, the, the largest sponsorship we've ever had as a club is £400 for a season. And, God bless that season. It was fantastic, uh, and and it was brilliant. And to be fair, Chris um, from Elements has has got very close to that this season as well. Um, but unfortunately, as I said before, we pay eight hundred and seventy pounds before we even kick a ball, and the second half of our instalment for pitch fees is due uh, over Christmas. So just before December, the the count the local council invoices for a second half of the of the season, um, and they're just fees to play the game um we also got told after affiliating just a week ago that the fa have decided to implement a new online registration scheme which is going to be three pounds per player uh and that was after our players had paid their sign-on fees so i've had to ask the players for more money just just to be registered to play the game so the fa really don't help at all um it's what do they do with all the money they make 
Uh, they bank it, Danny. They bank it, and it goes into things like ad revenue, uh, keeping the Premier League alive. It goes into TV rights to, so they can buy these expensive packages. It goes into these Amazon deals. Um, it goes into play, uh, sort of players, um, uh, what I would call player sundries, I suppose is the best way to put it. I'll, I'll just let listeners make their own minds up on that. But essentially, you know, the, the FA, um, they talk a good game. They're very good politicians um, and they invest in clubs that it makes them look good with and they will put in as much as they have to, but not anywhere more than that. And and the people that run, particularly down where I am, which is in the southwest of, of the UK, which is not a, a hotbed, if you will, for people necessarily, you know, we're quite out of the way down here. People think the West Country start, stops at Bristol. Um, so funding is not really given to clubs of, of, of our size unless you're willing to have a second club if you have a second club they will part fund that um, I don't have the time to run two clubs so um, I like to focus on the club I've got uh, and and you know we would love to make this club uh, not not a you know we haven't got delusions of grandeur we're never going to be in an FA Cup or you know a professional club but we would love to be able to provide you know good level football, good standard football for local lads, um, ranging of ages. We've got a player who's 17 to up to a player who's 45. Um, it's football for all. It's the beautiful game. We all support different clubs. We all have a good, um, you know, good laugh on a Sunday. We all enjoy it. If you follow our social media accounts, you'll know that I'm quite active on social media in terms of posting our results. And uh, the Carpenter Out campaign is is still mm -hmm. there in force. Uh, me, and, me and Mr. Davies have good bands with that. So, it's all about the fun. It's all about the enjoyment of the game. Um, but I can't stress enough. It's, it's hard work um, putting it in and it t requires a lot of time and a lot of effort and any support that any club of our size gets is, is fantastic. But we, you know, we have to stress it's purely optional. Um, you know, we're not, we're not going cap in hand. If people want to help us out and, and want to be a part of us, because that's how we see it. Anybody that helps us is a part of our club. Um, we, you know, we, we really appreciate it. And that's why we've gone to the trouble to get such really cool prizes to give away. Um, and, uh, and hopefully that will, will, uh, will benefit us as well as our listeners who, who want to get involved. And, and of course we're, we're in the process of rebuilding our club website as well. Um, and when that goes live, anyone who does make a donation to us will be, um, put onto our, essentially our hall of fame page. So it's a small thing but we'll mention you all on Twitter and, and on our website as well. If you want to be identified, some people like to just give a quiet donation and that's fine. But if you, if you want to shout out, then um, we'll, we'll gladly do it. So yeah, I've, I've carpentered the shit out of that Danny, haven't I? But <laughs> you know, I've just heard from Gav it is indeed one of each of those things. Great stuff. Yeah. So so they're only in stock at the moment. So when they do become back in stock, they'll be the first people to get them. So a bit of advice, if you want to win both, you, you, Donate a fiver from you, donate a fiver from your missus, then do a, a DDOS <laughs> on our website, and then no one else can donate, and you get both things for a tenner. And, if, and then they'll probably give you the shirt as well because no one else sent it. No, exactly. <laughs> How many times have you been close to going, oh, I just cannot afford this anymore? Um, three times. Uh, the first season we were put into the top league, and uh, we got spanked literally double digits every single week. And we were a bit of a pioneer club because the, the league – uh, identified the fact that we did it and we got spanked, spanked every week. We lost all the players and it was a nightmare. And since then um, they've changed things and they don't put newly established clubs into the top league anymore. So we trailblazed a little bit there, um, but we've been close to folding easily three times. And I'll, I'll be completely honest. This season was the closest we've ever come to saying maybe enough's enough, even, even if it's just for a season, because we, we finished the end of last season with two sponsors ending their, their commitments if you like quote unquote to the club you know we thank them for their service like it's just a monetary thing these businesses can't always provide sponsorship for more than a season so we wish them well and they they moved on um and from a squad of 27 last season we finished this season with a squad of five um that's the only we only have five players left from last season it's kind of um, still there Callum is still there. Yeah, oh, he great. he's uh, he set up a goal last night for, for our, one of our new strikers. So um, yeah, he's still there, um, and we still got uh, Nathan, um, Sam, and uh, Dan, who played for us last season, has been promoted to my assistant manager this year. So mm -hmm. we're keeping a few in house, but a lot of players moved on last year, and we finished the season. and And I 
basically said i'll give it until the end of july well not even the end of july i said the end of june mid, mid, medium part or middle part of july and if we can get a squad together we'll have we'll have a go and i'm i'm really really happy to say we've got 22 good lads and they're all good good uh good players good friendly bunch um all support and, different teams and you got into the semi-final of the cup last season we did yeah against all and the we odds were all gonna come down if you got to the final i know uh, yeah the dream would have been fantastic and unfortunately uh the quarter final was played before christmas the semi-final was after the winter break and the momentum unfortunately meant that we we, un we unfortunately lost the semi-final i think it's four two so um but it was a great run and a, and a, an experience we all enjoyed um we did go into the devon cup as well so we might even get a draw away from plymouth which would be quite fun road trip mm. uh, which we're we're hoping to do um um, and here's a fun story for you, Danny, which you won't won't have been aware of. We used to have a sponsor um, locally. He's a local businessman, um, and he works in a place called Saltash, which is in Cornwall, just down the road from us. He was stood in the playground talking to one of the teachers over the summer um, about, and he had his Barbican Pirates jacket on that we gave him as a sponsor. And he was chatting to this guy who's a teacher there, and this this guy turned turned to Trevor, the ex sponsor, and he said, "Oh, Barbican Pirates, that's the team that." the guy who's on the podcast bug camp wonderland isn't it <laughs> and uh trevor said yeah yeah he said Do you know he said dog oh, chris like that guy's the manager and uh trevor said yeah he said he said i he said i've got the i've got the urge he said i'm buzzing i'd quite like to get back into sundays can you you know can you get me in touch um we we've since signed mr toby clark if he's listening um and he is a magical player he's a fantastic player who played at a very high level um a very very high level he's a gentleman but he's a, an extremely good footballer so i he think that's the podcast he listens to the podcast he's and that's a bastard and that's how he found he's a gooner and that's how he found uh found us found me got in touch we had a little chat on twitter and um yeah toby is uh is now a pirate so brought together by podcast how about oh, that reminds me of the time when uh shredder who was on earlier and uh chris Lodato went to the game together and they know what's that group they're putting videos of each other all night lovely. long oh, thing of abw bringing love to the world yeah absolutely <laughs> and and we've always said if anyone lives in plymouth or you know it happens to come down this way lives in Cornwall, whatever you know hit me up on twitter that sounds really cool like the kids say but yeah drop me a message and let me know and you're yeah, more than welcome to come down and watch a game and take the piss out of us we're all it's all good it's all good fun um but yeah you definitely get in touch and, and we are launching a campaign this year danny as well aren't we i suppose we could tell the listeners about this um we mentioned that we're giving away a shirt as a third third winner if you like um if you want to own a barbican pirate shirt no donations in this um i should stress unfortunately we just have to charge what they what they cost but if you want to buy one uh get in touch with us either via my personal twitter account or via the pirates probably better to go through mine because i i pick up the messages quicker um let us know what you're after sizes and stuff and um, we can usually get them shipped within stock allowing within two two to two to four weeks max typically fully personalizable we've had quite a lot of people who've got a bird count wonderland on the front instead of the, the sponsor we have some people like the shirts as they are um but we'll we'll quite happily give um shout outs to all of you we have a guna in hell in norway um who has who sent us some brilliant pictures i must find his twitter Wasn't one of them where he said he was going for a walk uh, yeah, I think it was actually. Yeah, I'm, I'm fact, I'm sure it was. Uh, I forget his name. I'm going to look him up now. But he he lives in literally in hell, which is a place in Norway, and he's the proud owner of one of our shirts. And uh, he tweeted me. Australia's got one, hasn't he? Yeah, we've got Jeff in um, Canada. We've got yeah, Jeff in Canada. I mean, we've literally got them all over the place. Um, you should make a list of it, and uh, I should. And I should, but that that sort of leads us nicely onto the campaign that we're we're looking to do this year, which is uh, the hashtag We Are the Pirates campaign, which is essentially we want to get our we want to get our uh, our shirts all over the world. Um, we're we're carrying the Maltese Cross this year uh, because of my love for Malta. Um, it's where I holiday every year, so we're um, we're having an unofficial partnership with the Maltese uh, Island this year. Um, and there, this is uh, another fun story. There head of government of the actual country of malta um is going to retweet some of our um 
some of our Twitter stuff once we're in regular season. I have <laughs> leg- I've legitimately been speaking to uh, lead politicians in Malta about uh, an unofficial fun uh, link up. They're not paying us or anything like that. It's nothing serious, but they thought it was hilarious that a little tiny team in the southwest of England um, wanted to represent the island of Malta. So that's quite fun um, and, and quite funky. And uh, Guna, who left hell, is is our friend in Norway. Um, he's at bad underscore uh, Waltersdorf. Um, so, yeah, if, if you want to follow the Pirates account, you can do it. It's, it's at Barbican Pirates, uh, all one word on Twitter. So give us a follow. Um, and, yeah, we are the Pirates hashtag campaign. If you want to own a shirt um, and you want it personalized to your specifications, kids, uh, women, men, whatever age, then let us know. And we'll We'll sort you out fully customizable they don't make danny size though i don't think it only goes up to 2xl i'm afraid nobody does that's why i'm i'm only got a um a pair of trousers on there yes yes indeed yes it is 32 degrees in my sitting room at the moment it's quite hot isn't it yeah, it's it is very pleasant. hot yeah um and thank you all to everybody who shares our stuff as well and you know i know jace gives me shit every week but we have good Good banter in the groups. All the guys that are part of ABW have always been really supportive of what I what I try to do. And uh, you know, we, we all they all give me shit. They all wind me up, but it's a good cause, and and uh, it's all about keeping the beautiful game alive at the lowest levels uh, and and enjoyment of football. That's the most important thing. And um, as I say, we'll we'll try and be as active on social media as we can, so people can watch our. Uh, our games as best we can or we share photos and match reports all that sort of jazz so yeah we uh we're we're enjoying it we want to stay alive and and anyone who can help us um keep that dream going we we really appreciate you excellent yes so uh finally we should just quickly go over again gav from she has given us the 12 inch clock which is nearly 60 quid on his website and he has given us the wristwatch which is nearly a hundred pounds on his website and so one person will get each one and you're going to give away a shirt of their choice and yes. you can customize it to how they want to within reason. I will. And it won't be the last one either. I'm sure we'll do another, probably do a Christmas giveaway at some point as well. And um, and anybody who wants to order two or three shirts, we'll, we'll do you a deal. Don't worry about that. So get in touch if there's something you, you're interested in. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll hook you up. So you can go to atbergcampwonderland.co.uk, go to the donate page, and if you want to donate to Chris, just say this is for Chris. Like last time, a couple of you gave money for Chris, and uh, if you don't, then uh, I don't know what to do. Don't. Um, <laughs> don't buy some sandwiches. Purely optional, yeah. yeah. We're, I say we're, we're, we're not on the on the beg. It's uh, We're not going to turn off ABW podcast to you or, bo- or block you from listening. Uh, it's purely voluntary. Um and, and yeah, like I say, anybody who helps out, please do. If, if you do donate and you want to remain anonymous, then make sure you let us know because we, you know, we don't want people to feel uncomfortable. But if you donate, make sure, particularly if you donate via PayPal, just put your name on it as well. So we know who you are, because sometimes you just get an email address and it's not as personal. We, we, we like to to really give people a, a proper shout. So let us know who you are and um and we'll we'll give you a mention on on the on the ABW podcast, and potentially we might even do a few pirate based podcasts this year if I can if I can make it work. But I've got a I've got a sweet talk, Danny, about that. You, so. are, too, you are too kind. Uh, naturally, <laughs> right? I think that's us done now, isn't it? I think so. Yeah, I think we've probably gone a bit longer than we we planned, but somebody will listen to this. You know, Probably. a couple of people might. So, no, appreciate your time, Danny, and and the podcast support um is is hugely appreciated and thank you to our listeners for for tuning in and um yeah thanks keep, to gav. and thanks to gav absolutely yeah massive thanks to gav he's been brilliant to to us as a pod and to me personally and um really really happy to carry his logo and support his uh, his shop as well he started with nothing and look where he is now so well done gav he's a millionaire yeah <laughs> yes so uh thank you very much everybody uh go and give chris all your money Grassroots football. That's what it's all about, people. Amen. We are the Pirates. Goodbye.